Yay! Welcome everybody to this Zoom, this pragmatic psychology Zoom with the topic, the ease you think you cannot have. So um, I am super thrilled that we have so many of you joining us today for a topic that is quite interesting in days like these. Um, ease. Ease you think you cannot have. Um, and um, if you're on the Zoom and you just joined us, this Zoom is being translated in many different languages. So the people who are speaking at the same time, they are not necessarily crazy. They are just translating. <laughs> so um, I am super thrilled for actually that this is a topic that you guys are interested in. Because if you look around the world and how this world is functioning, it is often rather dramatic than pragmatic. So pragmatic means doing what works always. And ease and joy and glory always works. It always creates greater. And it's also something that takes a lot of courage to choose. It actually takes courage to choose ease and joy and glory. Um, have you ever acknowledged that? So um, in, with um, most of you probably have had something to do with the access consciousness tools and you might have heard the mantra of access consciousness. Have you? Yes. Many of you are saying yes, nodding, thumbs up. So the mantra of access consciousness is all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And um, Gary Douglas and Dane here, the founders of Access Consciousness, they always say, uh, so I recommend saying that mantra at least 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening. And in between when times are not that ease. And so all of life comes to you with ease and joy and glory is, is one of the most phenomenal things we can ask for. And yet extremely different. And maybe you have uh, in these times, um, we had just had Christmas. And uh, so the weeks prior to Christmas and around that time, usually for very many people are very interesting. It's where everything comes together. The end of the year, what we haven't accomplished, family, lovely, amazing family, um, <laughs> who brings, us, brings usually up the best in us, um, where we all can allow ourselves to expand our allowance and choose to expand our allowance and really, really go for using the tools that we have learned at any moment. And so um, that's, why I've was, that's why I picked the topic, the ease you think you cannot have. <laughs> and so one of the things that I just mentioned that I want to acknowledge is the courage it takes to choose ease. Because if you look around, um, how is the world functioning? Are people talking about and choosing possibilities and ease, joy, and glory? Or are they rather basking in gory difficulties, problems, and non-ease or dis-ease? And in a world like this, where you are confronted with drama and dramatics, Going for something that works, for something pragmatic, which is ease, joy, and glory, truly takes courage. Okay, so how much courage do you have to ask for something that not many people are asking for? Everything you haven't acknowledged about that, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Yes? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So um, I love to, to um, remind people of acknowledging themselves because it's one of the fastest tools. When you acknowledge you for something you are, the greatness you are, then the change you're asking for can come much faster. You know, when you're asking to, oh, I would love to have more ease. I would love to be the greatness of me. I would love to have more money. I would love to have a greater relationship or a relationship at all or none or whatever it is you're asking for. Um, one of the tools that gets you there the fastest is acknowledgement. Why? Well, because if you acknowledge 
you, if you acknowledge the greatness you are, if you acknowledge you for the great, for the courage you have to choose ease, joy, and glory, then you don't have to go back all the time and look where you don't have it to solve a problem you think you have. But you can be present with what you already are, the greatness you are, the ease, joy, and glory you already have. And from that platform, it's way easier to create more of what you're asking for. Okay, so what do you already have? What is already there? How much courage do you already have? Just give yourself some seconds. Because when we ask a question like this, we go, yeah, 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 I have ease, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But we seldom are really present with what already is here. Okay, so what courage do you already have? Take some moments and just, you know, sense, give yourself some seconds of, hmm, okay, what courage do I already have? Hmm, let me see. And then you just uh, be present with what comes up right now. And maybe there is some lightness coming up in your world with the acknowledgement. Maybe there's even a little smile that your body automatically puts on your face with the acknowledgement. So what courage do you already have? What ease do you already have? What joy do you already have? And what glory uh, do, you do you already have and be that you can now acknowledge? And everything that does not allow more of that, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. So acknowledgement gives you already more of what you're asking for. It's so amazing because, you know, one of the things that, um, that we, this reality teaches us uh, is that there are always problems, that there's always lack, that there's never enough, and that we always have to fill the, the gap. We always have to, you know, um, fill the need, fill the lack, uh, fix the problem. And so most of us have become professional problem solvers either really professional ones getting money for it, like psychologists, coaches, facilitators, uh, therapists of whatever kind, doctors, social workers, teachers, parents, um, <laughs> and so much more. And some of us are just professional problem solver uh, without having, having chosen it as a job. But how many of you have made yourself the professional problem solvers of this reality? which means you have to take on other people's problems, <laughs> trying to solve them. <laughs> and, uh, and usually when you are a problem solver, um, you, don't ask, you do not ask if the person desires the problem solved. You are a superstar, like a, like a superpower person uh, with a cape that says problem solver, P.S. And you probably smell problems a hundred thousand miles um, away from you and go, oh, this smells like a problem. I'm coming. I'm coming to save you. So everything that that is, everywhere you've created yourself as the problem solver of the universe. <clears throat> Truth, will you please destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. The thing is, if you create yourself as a problem solver, um, you have to create problems to have a job. Uh, we have a translator on the move. <laughs> Thank you. So if you create yourself as a problem solver, um, the thing is you always have to, um, you always have to create new problems so you can keep your job. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And you always have to carry problems around because that's what a problem solver does. And you have to, probably you have to even lock them into your body, fill up your fat cells with problems. It's awesome, huh? Your muscles get wonderfully tense also. And you make sure that there's not too much ease, joy, and glory in your world because otherwise you would lose your job as a problem solver. 
ta-da, everything that that is times a godzillion, everywhere you've created yourself as a problem solver, that requires you to create problems to keep your job, truth, will you please destroy and uncreate it times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shirts, boys and yawns. And it's amazing because if you are a, around family, which most of us or many of us maybe have been in the past weeks or friends or people we know, um, and they're not doing so well, and you are somebody who wants to bring ease, joy, and glory to others. Have you ever tried that? Have you ever tried to bring ease, joy, and glory to people who do not desire ease, joy, and glory? <laughs> Maybe in the past days or something or weeks. <laughs> How is that going? It's this wonderful experience <laughs> where you're like, yay, we can be joyful together, right? And then the person doesn't receive it. And then you try again and the person doesn't receive it. And then you try one more time because you don't give up because you've heard never give up, never give in. And so you do it again and again. And, and then um, the person does not receive it. They keep their stuff, their heaviness. You try to take on theirs. So you carry theirs as well. Why they don't want to get rid of it. And you feel like a failure. Everything that that is. Will you please destroy and uncreate it? That's a shortcut to insanity. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Simply don't quit, Annalie writes. <laughs> so, uh, and someone asked what to do it, just stop or, um, okay, I stop being a problem solver. So good question, what, what to do with this? You know, this is a question in the chat. You can, by the way, write things in the chat or unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, so, what to do with it. Number one, if you want to change something like this, the first step is to turn on the lights and to see what is. And that's basically what consciousness is. Consciousness is turning on the lights and you see what is. You're like, oh, okay, I was not aware that I was a wonderful, amazing, potent problem solver. Awesome. Now I see it. Okay, cool. And just you seeing what you're choosing and have been choosing for a long time, Oh, makes you go, oh, okay, actually it creates lightness to see what is. Even if it's not wonderful to see it, even if it's not an expansive choice to be a problem solver, but just to see what is and to be aware of what is oh, creates a sense of lightness. You're like, wow, okay, that's an amazing choice of mine to keep on carrying other people's heaviness with the attempt to make them feel lighter when you're actually not desiring to feel lighter. All right, great choice, awesome, I see it now. That's step number one. Step number two is to choose. <laughs> and I know that's one of the things that people don't wanna hear at all. It's like choose, I can't choose, I don't have choice, I have to take it on. All the lies you have bought that you don't have choice, will you please times a godzillion destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. <laughs> um, I recently was at a, a pragmatic at a, at a psychiatry conference and talked about pragmatic psychology, and I talked about you know choice and uh, and that you know our past doesn't determine our future. That we can choose new in every moment and create a different future. And then again and again and again. And it was so amazing because just some years ago, uh, people in that field. They, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to hear that. They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> our past does determine our future. If you had a, uh, a difficult childhood, this is going to be really tricky for your future. And this was the first time. This was a talk I had for 400 professionals. Um, you know what I mean, like doctors and, and therapists and so on. And they actually could hear it. There was one person out of those 400 who left the room because he did not like what I said. And that's it. The rest was, wow, thank you so much. You are saying what we always knew that we didn't dare saying. So awesome. So really that choice thing, it's getting more and more normal. And so let's bring more of that to the world, all of us. Let's remind the world that we have choice and that our past does not determine our future. So step number two was choosing, um, just going, okay, 
uh, I'm going to start 10 seconds with not being a problem solver just for 10 seconds. And I'm going to give myself 10 seconds of just sensing how is it to not be a problem solver. Okay. So let's do that together. So, um, and there's a, a great thing that Dane uh, here, Dr. Dane here was saying that I really like that fits here. He said, um, if I know not this, what would I choose now? Okay. So this problem solver thing. Yeah. So apply that sentence to, to the problem solver uh, choice you've made so far, choosing to be a problem solver. So now say to yourself, okay, so that thing with the problem solver, if I know not this, what would be possible now? If I know not this, what would be possible now? If I know not this, what would be possible now? And now give yourself some moments, some seconds, 10 seconds or so, and just go, okay, I'm going to choose right now to not solve any problems, not mine, not anybody else's. And I'm just going to bask in that lightness for just some moments of not having to solve any problems and just see what is that, how is that? What is that creating in your body? What's that creating in your world? What's that opening up? How is it? Just notice whatever you notice and allow it to expand your world. And now I'm sure 10 seconds are over. And now we have another 10 seconds. Now you can choose another 10 seconds to go, you know what? I'm not going to solve any problems. I don't have any problems. I'm going to choose to have no problems and not solve them and not mine, not anybody else's. <sighs> and see what that is creating for you and your body and your world. Uh, freedom, somebody writes. Yes. So you can um, really practice that 10 seconds choice. Uh, Choosing in 10 seconds increments. That's another access consciousness tool that I adore. And you can choose to choose to not have a problem 10 seconds and another 10 seconds and another 10 seconds and just see what that creates. And one of the things like that, that would be step number two. Um, and step number three would be um, the allowance that shows up because when you don't, when you choose to not have a problem, one of the things that also expands for you is the allowance. Like, have you ever tried to change something like where you go, Oh my God, I'm, you know, maybe let's take family. Um, you come home to your family and uh, you notice yourself talking like an idiot, you know, because that's what we usually do around family. We're like, um, go into this child mode. We're like, you know, we're talking and behaving like we used to behave when we met them as a child. And we're like, who am I? Ah, you know, you know, like you, those moments where like, why am I talking that way? Why am I behaving that way? What's going on? And you're like, I'm going to change this. You know? And then maybe you go to the toilet and go, I'm whoops, sorry. I'm taking away my, my video because I see my internet is unstable. Um, so I just said that when you come home to your family, um, usually we, we go into this child mode, you know, like you behave like you were when you met, when you were a child with your family, you talk like, you know, the way you did when you were a teenager or a child and you go like, Oh my God, who am I being? You know, this energy of, I'm not sure if I like myself right now. And then you go into this, okay, I have to change this. I have to change this. I, I, I can't do this. I have to be me. Come on. I have to be me. I have to be light and free and easy and joyful around my family. Come on, lightness. Come on, joy. Ah, you know. And then you try to force lightness and you try to force ease and you try to force, uh, you know, all these things. But ease, joy, and glory can't be forced. Okay. The only way. You can get to ease, joy, and glory with your family or anybody else is by, ta-da, allowance. <laughs> allowance for everything you are, allowance for them, and yeah, especially for who you are. 
Like if you notice that you're not having ease during Dory with your family and you're talking like you did when you were 10 years old or something and you're not liking yourself, pot and pock the not liking yourself and say allowance expand out. Allowance for my stupidity expand out. <laughs> okay? So you can never force yourself to change. You can just be in total allowance for everything you're being at the moment. And from that allowance, go into the next thing of celebrating. You know, celebrate that you're talking like an idiot. Celebrate that you're behaving like you're 10 years old. Who cares? Just go, oh my God, I'm just going to do 10-year-old stupidity talk right now and enjoy as much as I can. Okay? Okay. Like really, allowance and celebration of everything you're choosing is creating so much ease. And this is the, the, the topic of the Zoom is the ease you think you cannot have. So this is one of the, um, thank you, this is great help. Somebody writes, I'm really grateful that it helps you. Um, so the, the, things that, that, the thing that doesn't create ease for us is the constant need to change something, the constant force I have to change this. I have to become happy. I have to become, um, yeah, an amazing person with my family. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah, you know, it's like this constant force. It's driving us crazy. Everything that that is, will you please destroy and uncreate it? <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shirts, boys and yawns. What if you have total allowance for everything you're being at every moment and you just embrace that there's never anything wrong? Okay, what if you embrace that there's never anything wrong and never anything right? Everything that doesn't allow that, will you please destroy and create it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Someone writes in the chat, so what's coming up for me is the problems are often things like overwhelm, too much to do kind of thing. So for me, it doesn't have to be a major incident. It is often many small day-to-day -day stuff. Great awareness now that for me. Yes, uh, it doesn't have to be a certain situation. Sometimes it's just many things that you're aware of. And um, that just brings me to another amazing tool that is very advanced. You have to have studied the high arts of consciousness for at least a hundred years before you can engage in this tool. I'm not sure if you're ready for this. <laughs> it's super difficult. <laughs> it is drum roll the tool who does this belong to i know it's so advanced it's awesome um because i've you know i've done access for many years many 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 years i have facilitated many classes i have done and gone many classes with different facilitators mostly gary and dane and um and Sometimes I forget to use that tool and I find myself getting cranky and not fun to be around, especially now at Christmas time. And then a friend of mine asked me recently, um, excuse me, um, who does this belong to? Oops, is this even yours? And I'm like, thank you so much for asking me this question. You know, we've heard it a gazillion, gazillion, million, billion times, but often we forget it. And I can just say how much art of consciousness you have studied for a gazillion years, this tool always applies. It's just awesome. And it's also very pragmatic, okay? So who does this belong to? especially when you have many things. <laughs> awesome, so much lightness now. I'm su super happy. Thanks for the comment. <laughs> um, so really, like, don't forget that tool, especially for us people who are highly aware. It's like, it's so funny because the people, what I've noticed in day-to-day -day life, also in my work in psychiatry, mental health, with anybody I've worked with, the people who seem to have the most problems are usually the most aware ones. It's like really everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. If you're someone who goes, why am I the person who always has the most problems? Seriously, 
everybody seems so light and easy and has no problems you know they're like oh you know oh i'm fine i'm fine i have my family i have my kids i have my job i'm satisfied <laughs> and you wonder what's wrong with you because you're not satisfied because you're always the one who has problems <clears throat> why do you think that is may it be because you are the aware person in this world or one of the aware people in this world so everywhere you've decided that you are the problem person, you're the black sheep of problems in this world, you're always the one who has problems. When you're actually one of the most aware people on this planet, everything you haven't acknowledged about that, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Yeah? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. It's so amazing how the most aware people are always the ones who think they have problems. And if you're someone like this, you have to ask, who does this belong to? Because you probably are solving so many other people, people's problems that you have decided are yours. So everything you have decided is yours. And everything you have created as yours. Will you please, times a godzillion, destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Oh, thank you for the comments. Really happy. It helps you. So, so amazing. So that's really the ease you think you cannot have. And with the underscore, I'm not sure if that's an English expression, you know, the highlight, no, the, the line under the word underscore, I don't know. Um, under thinking. Um, think you cannot have. Because when you think, you cannot have ease. Okay. So stop thinking so much. Start enjoying more. Everything that doesn't allow that, will you please destroy and create it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shots, boys, meons. And one of the tools to have more of that, I'm sure you all heard of it or most of you have heard of it, heard, heard about it. But we have all these tools and often we forget about them and we forget to use them, especially in situations of problems. Um, is that what are the tools you can use to have less thinking and more being? And more ease is ta -da -da, another drum roll, super, also very um, advanced and highly complicated. It's um, it's the tool of expand out, like sense your body, and you can do this if you have no idea where your body is. Sometimes we forget because we're so up in our head. Just touch your body somewhere, you know, hand here, hand on the belly you know, one hand on the chest, one hand on the belly or somewhere else, you know, you can have your hand wherever you want, you know, it can be a, another fun place. You can put your hand, whatever is fun for you. And then that way, you can <laughs> yes, joy is pragmatic. So is pleasure. So um, just put your hands wherever you, you want to touch yourself. And that's where you connect with your body. And then, um, ask yourself to occupy as much space as possible. Like for example, occupy the room you're in now. Like just go and expand out. Occupy the whole room I'm in now. And now most of you are already beyond the room. So <laughs> take the whole house you're in. Now occupy the whole city you're in. There you go, that's bigger. Now occupy the whole country you're in. And now occupy the whole continent you're in. And notice what that's creating in your world. More ease. See, it's really hard to think when you're occupying more space. And the less you think, the more ease you will have. Okay? So all of life comes to you with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to you with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to you with ease and joy and glory. I love that mantra again. Like, wow. And I, I have it since the first day I heard it. I have it on my, in my bathroom. I wrote it down and it's like between the, the mirrors. So I can't miss it. So every morning I see all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. It's one of the most um creative tools because you really allow yourself to receive everything and not shut out anything and that's one of the most 
crazy things to do in this reality. It's like I was taught when I, I was uh, studying psychotherapy, I was taught the craziest things um, that I should do with my patients to shut out what they were delivering. And I'm like, why? Are they dangerous? I didn't know that patients are dangerous. I have to protect myself against them. And they said, yes, you have to protect yourself against your patients because you might be worn out by the end of the day if you are not protecting yourself. And I'm like, all right, that's interesting. So how do I do that? And they were giving me the craziest things to do. Like I should imagine a river between me and the patient. And I'm like, mm, okay, so what's in the river? Are there fish in the river? Is there a bridge somewhere we can cross? Are there flowers on the river banks? No, 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 no. It's not about the river. <laughs> I'm like, I can't concentrate on the patient if I have to concentrate on the river. And I'm way too ADHD and too OCD to not imagine exactly how that river looks like. Don't tell me imagine a river if I'm not allowed to exactly imagine how the river looks like. So that's just um, these crazy things that you learn in this world to protect yourself. And then I noticed how much energy it takes to protect myself against um, patients and that it's way easier if I just receive everything and get so much more information from the people I work with. Like if I don't protect myself, I get a vast amount of information from them that can help me help them way better than protecting myself. So everywhere you're protecting yourself against the world, that limits your receiving and limits your being. Will you please times a godzillion destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Wow. So one more time, everywhere you're protecting yourself against the world that limits your receiving and limits your being. Whew, will you please times a godzillion destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. It's like, imagine if we would go through the world with way more space. I've just been skiing for a day because that's all I had time for, but it was a very nice and sunny day. And I just realized that, you know, on the skiing lift, you know what I mean with, I don't know if that's the correct word in English, but skiing lift, you know, where they wait to go up the hill, the thing. And, um, and it was amazing to see how people are so in their little cubicle. They're like in, they're like in this little personal space where they're not at all aware of anybody around them. So everybody basically bumps into each other. Um, <laughs> and I'm like so surprised that people don't ski into each other way more than they do because they're like so not aware of anybody else. And then when you sit on the lift where there are four people, and there's somebody next to you that is not the person that you are skiing with. Um, that's it's a stranger, whatever that means. They're like, they're creating this, this weird energetic wall between you. I shall not talk to you because we're not official friends, you know, and we're not family. So we shall not talk. And we have this weird separated wall between us for whatever reason. It's so crazy. And it's like, imagine if we would change that. Imagine if more of us would go, you know what? I don't care if you're my friend or if I know you or if my family, hey person, whatever your name is, hi, you know, and you just energetically say hi to them and, and be aware of their wall, be an allowance of their wall and don't make the wall relevant. Just go, oh my God, you're so awesome person with this beautiful, amazing wall you built. That's amazing. So powerful. <laughs> oh, so cute. Oh my God, this wall is protecting you so much, you know, and you're just aware of it and you just don't do anything with it. It's so funny. And I wonder what we could change if more of us would do that. Like what world could we create if we would actually open up a bit more and receive more, even receive other people's walls? You know, that can be fun too, because it's so amazing. It's so adorable, you know, when people create these walls and they think they can protect, be protected. And it's like uh, I heard in Japan or something um, where they have like these really thin like paper walls. And I heard somebody saying that they um, created their senses in a way where they stopped hearing beyond the wall. Like literally they changed their level of hearing so that because, you know, there's so many people living in such a small place and they created this, this, these paper walls or these really thin walls, 
they created, like they changed their senses in their way of hearing. So they made themselves not hear what's being said on the other side of the paper thin wall. Wow. That's how powerful we are with our senses and our bodies and our creations. Um, like really our point of view creates our reality. And, and what if we don't do that anymore? What if we are the ones who are changing this? I mean, we're many people on the Zoom and many, many people who have signed up who are going to listen to this later because this is being recorded and you're all going to get the recording to listen to it one more time. Um, so it's really cool if so many of us go, you know what? What if we just make a different choice and open up and receive more? I wonder how that influences our money flows and our joy and our sex reality and our relationships and our jobs and our sense of possibilities would that be something yeah cool so um this this thing of pragmatic psychology is something that started many years ago um when i was in psychiatry and asked for hey what can psychology truly be and for me psychology could be a place that acknowledges what people always knew and know that no one has ever said. It's this place of total empowerment. And that's what I um, aim to bring to the world with pragmatic psychology, because for me, psychology should be about knowing and empowerment rather than about dramatics and solving problems and being wrong and thinking you're wrong or having to change or the labels of sane and insane. And um, I am so thrilled about how this is being received nowadays in even the professional fields. It's really awesome to see, um, like years ago when I started, this was just a weird approach that is extremely different. And now people want to hear that and invite me to conferences and ask me to write in their psych journals. So it's, I'm really thrilled about this. And this is not only something for professionals. This is something for you, for anybody who desires to be, to be who they truly are, to you know, embrace their difference and learn how to use it in a way that makes your life work, that makes your life more ease than you think you can have. And um, so uh, this is something that's also offered in form of classes. And uh, we're going to have, I do not have many English classes. So right now I only have two of them. And uh, you can join them in Budapest or online or in France, Toulouse or online. Um, in the one in Budapest is two days. Um, Muriel just posted this. It's in January and you can also be online from your home. And with such a Zoom thing, you can see us and you can ask your questions live. Or if you can't be on live, you get the recording and you can send in the question via email if you want. So it's a two-day class, the first one in Budapest, no prereqs required. You can just come and join and explore more of this and more of how is joy and glory can your life be and how can you use you and the crazy you to make your life work for you, greater than you can ever imagine. And uh, the topics we talk about in these classes are everything from um, um, the difference you are in the world, it's a lot about creating. So it's not about only problem solving. It's actually taking my difference, actualize my life, to create my life. It's a lot about creating. And oops, so I'm gone again. So the class is not only about solving problems, but it's a lot about creating and how can I use my difference to create my life. And last time I had this class uh, was also a lot about abuse because the people in class ask a lot about abuse and how can we use the abuse of the past to create our future. That's a very weird thing to look at, but it actually works. You can use everything, even abuse, to create your future. And, um, but that takes a little bit more to talk about to see how that works. And uh, then the one in Toulouse, that's the advanced class, also in English and translated into different languages. So is the Budapest one. And the advanced one, you need to have a prereq, either the first one, the two-day class, or an Access Consciousness Foundation class. And in the three-day advanced version, this is for practitioners. This is for people who work with people, for socialists, for socialists, for social workers, not socialists, social workers, teachers, uh, practitioners, facilitators, doctors, parents, teachers, 
who want to know how can I facilitate change? How can I use the tools of access to facilitate what I think I cannot facilitate? It's also where we try out facilitation. We're going to um, pair up in two and going to um, explore um, how, how you can facilitate and what else is possible. I had this class in Mexico recently and they were just totally thrilled. They're like, oh my God, I learned so much about how to deal with my clients and, and the people that seem so hard to deal with and to facilitate. And if you have done both of them, you can apply to do pragmatic psychology intro classes as well. So just know this is available. There are also YouTube videos. There's the book. The book just got a new title. It's not called Pragmatic Psychology anymore. The new title is um, Practical Tools for Being Crazy Happy. We have new book agents and they said, uh, we have to change the title. Pragmatic Psychology is not something that many people can hear. So we changed it to, pra to Practical Tools for Being Crazy Happy. And it's in English. It's in Spanish very soon, uh, just some weeks away from Spanish. Um, we have Italian, Chinese, and French, and more languages to come. And so if you like this, there are also many articles you can read and share. And I am super grateful for, for just you considering something greater. And please acknowledge you and the greatness you are. And everything that doesn't allow more ease and joy and glory into your world, let's destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and yarns. And please know that, you know, your choice to be on a Zoom like this and listen for such a long time, um, what does that say about you? What, what leader of the future are you that brings something to the world and to the planet that it so desperately requires? So please, please know that about you. Please, you know, it's the people who are the greatest, the leaders, the most aware ones are so often the ones who think they're most fucked up. Please, 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 please ask who does this belong to. Please, 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 please go. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Whatever you require to know who you truly are, celebrate it and go for being as amazing as you truly are. So thank you for you. You're all going to get the recording in an email. If you can't find it, go to your spam. You know, it's interesting nowadays with emails and uh, enjoy being you and maybe we see each other in person or online at a class or where, wherever in the world. So thank you, merci, tak, danke, thank you. And mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> tak, tak. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.